Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. I figured you guys could use some good news for a change, so I dug some up for you. From Bloomberg, short sellers lost $195 billion in 2023 despite wins on regional banks. From the article, regional banks and vaccine makers were among the few bright spots for short sellers in 2023 as the stock market's big rally last year delivered the group's steepest cumulative loss since the depths of the pandemic yeah too bad anyway guys take a look at the chart magnificent seven stocks among 2023's worst short bets uh, do you see now why they had to attack apple right out of the gate on the first day of the trading year uncle frank is hoping for more surprise good news for the mag 7 and or the small cap markets Okay, before the bell, all eyes on the jobs report. Will we rally? Will we sell off further? Place your bets. The December jobs report is set for release Friday morning and is expected to show more signs of a cooling labor market to finish 2023. The monthly labor report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, slated for release at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, is expected to show non-farm payrolls rose by 175,000 in December, while the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.8% from the previous month, according to consensus estimates compiled by Bloomberg. The report will serve as a test for whether the market can shake off a dismal start to the new year after a rally to end 2023. So it's not all bad news out there for you AMC victims who have suffered through a week of new 52-week lows on zero bad news, just naked stock manipulation in the open, and a CEO who insists on swapping stock for debt at record lows with a notorious short seller of our own stock. I've got some interesting things to pin my hopes on. So what's this? Streaming revolt? Customers turn their backs on Netflix, Hulu, and Prime amid skyrocketing prices, annoying ads, and unwatchable shows? Call it cord-cutting sequel, The Streaming Purge. More and more Americans are cutting their subscriptions to streaming services amid high costs and content fatigue. But this doesn't make sense. Rich Double Chin Greenfield told us theaters are dead. Streaming is the future. AMC is only worth a penny. Yeah, maybe not. The article on the previous slide was from Fortune. This runs from the Wall Street Journal, The Big Guys. Americans are canceling more of their streaming services. Hulu and other streamers are turning to bundles, discounts, and ad-supported plans as customer defections rise. Doesn't fit the narrative, does it? Meanwhile, over at Deadline, here's a headline from today. Global box office reaches $33.9 billion in 2023, up 31% over 2022. Interesting. And these articles aren't from Seeking Alpha or Investor Place. This is Forbes and CNN Business. In the final weekend, movie box office surpassed $9 billion in 2023. That's obviously the U.S. box office. And from CNN Business, U.S. box office in 2023 passes $9 billion, the best total since before the pandemic. And then another, China box office soars 83% and reaches $7.7 billion in 2023. Why did I bring that up? We don't have any theaters there. But guys, what's going on in China? A severe economic downturn. The theaters do good during recessions. And by the way, it would be nice if AMC Investor Relations would mention that the box office, at least the U.S. box office, finished above $9 billion for the year. 
And some more hopium from Parade. 65 bands and artists touring in 2024. Live music is definitely back in a big way, and there are plenty of bands and individual artists who are heading out or back out on the road in the coming year. Why do I bring it up, guys? Obviously, more concerts, more chances for concert films to drop in our theaters, Taylor Swift and Beyonce. All right, guys, you see the headline on the top. Domestic box office expected to drop by $1 billion in 2024 amid fewer films and waning moviegoer sentiment. I mean, did these people even hear about Barbenheimer? So just before we top $9 billion at the box office, in spite of the writers' and actors' strikes, everyone in the media said 2024 already sucks, already doomed. Probably a billion less than 2023. I want you guys to listen to this woman's analysis for a different opinion. Her first comments are about going directly to streaming with Eddie Murphy's new Beverly Hills Cop instead of dropping in the theaters first, right? Prizes can no longer be counted on. So are some just throwing in the towel early? Is this a trend that we're going to see or is this really particular to Beverly Hills Cop? I think it's particular to Beverly Hills Cop, and I think it's designed to bring subscribers to Netflix, whose churn is goes up every single month. But no, the movie. I think the, I disagree with J.P. Morgan. I think the movie box office has to be higher in 2024 because the studios were on strike between the writers for seven months between the actors and the. So how can the box office not be higher in 2024 and 2025? And I will tell you, from an economic point of view, having multiple windows like theatrical broadcast, streaming is way more lucrative when you spend $100 million on a film than spending $100 million and putting it into a single form of distribution called streaming. So I think what Netflix is doing with Beverly Hills Cock is really ill-advised, my opinion. Yeah, oh, well, then, in what way are they thinking that they're going to make the money? And in, if, I mean, if they had come to you and said, okay, how should we see a return on this investment? What would you have advised? Well, I think they've always said we're streaming first and we're sort of here to undermine the traditional, let me call it, you know, content ecosystem. So they've, you know, you have to fight with them like crazy to get a theatrical release. So they were controlling this asset and they took it straight to streaming. I think this is on brand for them. But I think any other streamer would have put this in the theaters because a lot of people in their 50s and 60s, in my opinion, would have gone to see Eddie Murphy on the big screen again because we saw Beverly Hills Cop 1, 2 and 3. Love to see him on the big screen. The focus on the franchises, though, it it's almost feeling tired. I mean, Barbie came out of the gate and blew the world away, and that was a, something totally new and innovative, even though it was based on a, a doll that's been around for generations. Uh, Oppenheimer, uh, again, it was something that was new and different. It's not based on a franchise. And if you look at what's happened with Disney and the Marvel, um, the, the Marvel movies that are coming out, they just sort of... Meh. Really? I mean, are we going to continue to see this pattern of, well, that worked in the past. Let's see if we can make it work nine more times. So the answer is, I would say Barbie and Oppenheimer are like catching lightning in a bottle. You're starting from scratch, trying to get people to care. They were both incredibly well executed on every level. And it, like I said, catching lightning in a bottle. No one would have guessed. But and they came out at the same time. So a lot of people saw both of them on the same day, which was like six hours of movie going. So that is not the best way to spend $100 million at a time. The best way to spend $100 million at a time is put it in a franchise sequel where people will come just because it's Harry Potter or just because they love Aquaman or just because they love Iron Man. They'll, there's a certain level of people who will come. And if it's a hit, you still keep all the upside right. from the hit of a great story, but you protect your downside risk on these massive investments. What we're seeing too so there it is, guys. Uh, it's, it's a big mistake to go directly to streaming with Beverly Hills Cop, in my opinion. Uh, Laura Martin points out, you know, she would have put it, she would have put it in the theaters first. Uh, I, I think eventually people are going to learn the hard way in the streaming world that you need to drop it in the theaters first like they did with Napoleon uh, from Apple and Sony. And this article caught my eye. Charlie Sykes ominously predicts 2024 will be wilder than 1968. Going to be so many black swan events. 
And how about this one? Black Swan looms in 2024. Expert warns of unprecedented economic upheaval and U.S. election disruption. The economic prognosis for 2024 presents a diverse picture. While some forecasters see a light to medium downturn with differing schedules and effects among sectors, others hold a brighter or at least controllable outlook dependent on robust monetary strategies and additional elements. For example, a soft landing is expected for the U.S. economy marked by a deceleration but avoiding a full-blown recession. Conversely, economist Harry Dent foresees a substantial market collapse, one potentially surpassing the Great Depression. Listen, Uncle Frank is long a theater stock, XRP, and natural gas, UNG. You can't scare me. Bring it on. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.